Hey, this is Flo and in this video I'm going to update my old combine based API service to use the new async and await features. So basically I will show you a new generic API service that you can use for basically any web based JSON API. For that I have already created a GitHub repository so if you want to um, check out the code just go to the link in the description and you can download the project. But let's get into it. I have already written the code and I will just go through it, explain to you and then show you how to actually use it. So first of all, just like last time, we have an API service and this is the generic method that we are going to use for basically any JSON API. So the method is called fetch and it fetches some generic type T, but it has to be decodable, obviously, and the method returns an array of that type. So in my example, I'm going to fetch some to-do items from a example um, API. Then um, function obviously needs a URL from which to fetch. It is asynchronous and it can also throw errors. Now let's go into the logic. So first of all, we are once again using the URL session shared as always when dealing with um, URL tasks. But instead of using a data task publisher, we can just access the dot data from URL function, which is new in Swift 5.5. And that is an asynchronous function, so we have to await for the result to come in. And it can also throw errors, so we need to mark it with try. This function gives us back two, um, yeah, two arguments, basically. It gives us back the data that we fetched and a URL response. If you want to, you can handle this response, but um, right now I am just collecting the to-do data and I'm not collecting the response, hence the underscore here. Next up, now that we have fetched the data, we need to decode it. So first of all, we need a JSON decoder. And then we can just say our decoder should decode an array of our generic type T from the to-do data that we just fetched via the URL session. This can throw because not everything can be decoded obviously, so we need to try to run this decode function and then store it in a result variable which we can then return. In the end you could also directly say return instead of assigning a variable here, this is up to you. Okay, so this is already the generic part and now if we want to use this function to fetch something. It's actually really, really simple. So I've already provided you with an example down here to fetch some to-dos. Now let's actually look at where they come from. So um, same as last video, I'm just using the JSON placeholder API, which just gives us an array of to-do items. Each of them have a user ID, an ID, a title, and a flag whether the to-do item was already completed or not. So I just created a, a very simple struct here that represents the data. The struct needs to be codable, of course, or at least it needs to be decodable. And it also uh, is identifiable because it has already an ID property that is unique. And um, this is not 100% needed, but for the example that I'm implementing, I added the identifiable protocol conformance as well. Okay, now to actually fetch the to-dos, we created a function called fetch to-dos which is once again it's asynchronous and can throw errors and it will in the end return an array of our to-do uh, struct. First of all, we need to construct a URL from which we want to fetch the data. So um, let's say let URL equals this URL here. And if that doesn't work, that's why I put it in a guard statement here, then we're just going to return an empty array because this constructor of URL, okay, you can't see it here, um, is actually returning an optional URL. So um, this is basically a way to unwrap it here with the guard statement. And then in the end, the actual API call, incredibly easy just as last time. Use your API service or enum here. Use the function fetch, which we defined up here. Pass in the URL that we just unwrapped and then just return all of that. Now obviously this is an asynchronous function as you can see up here. So we need to await for the result and it can also throw as you can see up here. So we need to actually 
try to await the result. And once we got the result, we can just return it. Okay, that's the theory. Now let's see how this can be used in practice. So for that, I have just added a sample content view, which has a state variable, which is an array of to-dos. And in the beginning, it's just an empty array. And then in our body, we just have a list over all of the to-dos from this variable here, and then just for the text with the to-dos title, as you can see here, each to-do item has a title. You can also see that in our to-do struct right here. Okay, now to fetch the data, there is a new dot task modifier in SwiftUI 3, which uh, allows you to run an asynchronous task. So I can just say, okay, our to-do to do's property should just try to await the API service dot fetch to do's call. Let's have a look at the signature here. Okay, this is what we just added in our API service. Fetch to do's is asynchronous. That's why we need to await the result. And it can throw errors. That's why we need to try to do it. And actually, we need to wrap all of this in a do catch block because the dot task modifier requires that the closure is not throwing. Also, the task modifier is a bit similar to the on appear modifier because it will fire once when the view loads. So as you can see here in the static preview, nothing is displayed because our array is empty in the beginning. But once I hit resume and then hit the play button, you will see that the data is instantly fetched right there. Okay, that's already it from the video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel to see more content and check out the repository on GitHub. See you in the next one.